My name is Josh Heileman, and I am a visual artist, and I do mixed media acrylic paintings, and they kind of incorporate, I guess, environments and characters that you commonly would not see, but they have a sense of familiarity about them. You know, it's never really been a conscious thought, but you know, I, you know, you can kind of look at things and kind of see where it comes from. You know, and I think that most of my characters generally represent people or feelings or a certain way that I feel as though I interact with them, and it kind of you know, causes a whole line of thought that spurs the whole thing. You know, some of them are more intentional than others. But the majority of the time, it's totally unintentional. It's just kind of a flood of imagery and feelings and kind of themes, you know, that, uh, that kind of come through. That's kind of the, the thing about all this that makes it really fun is that you never really know what you're going to get, you know, until, until the very end when the refinement step comes in. You just really have no idea what it's going to come up with. You know, looking at my background, I, you know, I spent a lot of time alone as a child, and all I did was draw. I would just lock up in my room. You know, I wasn't locked up in there, but I would lock myself in there, you know. I had no interest in doing anything else, really. You know, and so I would uh, just lock up in there and make friends, you know. And so you just kind of, you know, as long as I can remember, it's all I've done. And, you know, it doesn't really seem like a, a thing. It's just, you know, I do, you know, and it's kind of, uh, it could be interpreted probably as, you know, the way that kind of, um, I guess, the self-therapy in a way. I got involved in art kind of uh, involuntarily. It, it, was, it became something that, you know, I guess it started out as, a, as an explorative thing and it became kind of uh, an obsession and then it became a lifestyle. You know, early on, you know, I would doodle, I would draw all kinds of just kind of cartoon type characters, you know, and they would always just be in kind of odd situations. And it was, and, you know, I look back on it, and I didn't think of this at the time, but I look back on it, and it was all pretty much the same thing that I do now. It was all primarily like pencil, pencil work that you know, very, very highly detailed shading. You know, I, I think I did my work kind of in secret due to, you know, definitely due to my environment. You know, I have no hard feelings about that it's because I, I think that that's partly why I do it the way I do it. So I, I received such a kind of an adverse viewpoint from all of the adult figures in my life other than my mother you know but it was just uh, kind of you know definitely aided with the, the, the secretiveness of it. You know fresh out of I guess my senior year of high school I finally was starting to kind of get wrapped up into it. I had never painted before until, I guess, my 11th grade year. Like, towards the very end, I started painting, and I was like, hmm. You know, and it kind of opened up a whole new world for me. And I had some, actually, some very supportive teachers in high school. Um, Marty Burnich was very supportive, and he's like the head of the art department at right. Putnam City High School. Now, it'll probably take, you know, a few attempts and again, if I could show you my whole history of doing non-objective, I mean, I've got probably hundreds of these that I would probably never show the public. So, uh, so again, just kind of relax, have fun. Uh, uh, you know, when I moved up kind of in the food chain to be, when become head of the art department, uh, Josh and I kind of moved together because I was in another room in the building. And so uh, in that year, 87, 88, I moved to this room 
And so with that move, Josh also moved with me. He was a student who, who had that vision and he had that, you know, that work where it, it told a story. It was a narrative in a sense to where uh, he dressed differently than everybody. He maybe acted differently than everybody else. And so what ended up happening was his work reflected that, that struggle and, and that perception that people would have of him. I think that he saw something and he definitely uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things. He kind of handed, handed this huge pile of encouragement to me and it struck me very deep. I was originally going to go to college to be an art teacher. Um, I was very, very clear headed on it. I, that, I want to be an art teacher, you know, and as time went on, I kind of realized that that really wasn't what I wanted. And so, you know, I just kind of lived my life for a while and didn't do a whole lot of art. It, it kind of went back to the way it was when I was a child to where, I mean, I had tons of sketchbooks, but I wouldn't show them anybody. But through all that, I kind of started to feel very stifled. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel crazy? And I was like, oh, it's because I'm not doing art. And I realized finally that because I wasn't doing art, I was going insane, which remains today. Like, that's, if, I, if I'm not painting, I feel insane. I guess my frustration about not doing any art just kept growing and growing and growing. And I just finally just, it, uh, it kind of triggered a new era of things, you know? And so then at, at that point, I guess that was probably, that was probably around 2000, 2001. I've definitely put the work in and I've, I've explored every other option to such an extent that I know there is no other option but painting. I, I, I guess it was probably around 2002. I, I I'd finally, been kind of uh, practicing art, painting and whatnot, and getting really excited about it again. And I was getting real into a bunch of different mediums I'd never tried before. And it was very exciting, you know? And, and then everyone around me started being like, well, you wanna go sell it? You ought, to, you ought to sell this. And I was like, yeah, it's been a while since I've sold anything. My girlfriend at the time, she had mentioned that the hair salon that she went to, which is the Velvet Monkey, they had art hanging on the walls. And I was like, oh. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I was coming by to see Estrella. Is she? And you know, I went in with this portfolio of slides. I mean, there's probably two or 300 slides in there. And I, uh, <laughs> I walked in, you know, very awkward. I'd never met anyone in this place. I never stepped foot in this place, you know, and I walk in and I'm like, yeah, I was wondering if I could talk with the manager. Josh, um, he came into my life right after we opened the original salon. He just came in one day and we became instant friends and he actually did our original sign, The Velvet Monkey, and he, um, I think, was our first artist that we showed and we've just been friends ever since. He's kind of come into my life and out of my life at different times and he's just amazing. His art is so moving. I've seen Josh's art grow and his style change so much and his stuff lately is just, you'll just look at a piece and you're just like, it's almost like he painted it for you. It's just so different and weird and strange and, and fun and I don't even know, I, I can't really put him in a, a category. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I wanted to talk to you about a couple things. Oh yeah. We did lounge. Yes. Here comes Estrella Evans, and she pulls me to the back, and she's like, "Oh yeah, you know, we do. We're we're hanging shows, and you know, she had just opened up this salon too, so it was kind of new and fresh for her too, and." You know, she looks through my stuff and she's like, ah, you know, I could tell she was genuinely into it, you know. I would definitely say that um, the Velvet Monkey had 
a very integral role to kind of motivating me to try more. You know, I like you know there wasn't a whole lot of actual sales that occurred, so it definitely wasn't supporting me. But you know, the encouragement was all that was really needed at that time period. are all partial partial pieces that are about to be done. Nice. I've I've received the full range of reactions throughout throughout the years and you know I, I can I can very very uh, honestly say that the majority of them are very positive. Okay, I love this piece. It's probably my favorite one. Why? It's like like really deep cuz you do it like I don't know very much about art at all. Um, but it's really multidimensional um, with the different layers of the gold. When you look at it different ways, you see a lot more underneath it. Okay. Some of it's disturbing, some of it's very peaceful, some of it's uh, almost a cathartic. And generally, they say they feel exactly how I meant for them to feel. Sometimes you'll get the total opposite. You know, people will take something and just run with it the total opposite direction of what I intended, but that is, uh, is one of the greatest parts of the process, really, because, you know, I, I love surprise. Uh, surprise is the greatest thing ever, you know, and so somebody tells you the total opposite of what you think, you're just like, oh, okay, it kind of helps you reposition yourself, you know. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good. My, my friend just bought me one of your pieces. Oh, really? Which one did you get? The little, um... <laughs> Oh, let me guess, let me guess, the little, little bronze, bronzish one with the little fluff balls, right? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> it deeply honors me to know that somebody would want a piece of me in their home or office or enough to throw money at it. You know, because I, because I know that, you know, not for everybody, but the majority of people, money is something that you only spend on things you really like. Um, at, at one point in time, I did have a little bit of difficulty being able to let go of them of my pieces uh, because they they're very much a part of me I guess it's something you just kind of have to grow into being able to let go of it because uh, you know you, you realize that you're you're not doing it for you and not to mention if you try to keep everything you end up with a ridiculous amount of art everywhere I will definitely continue doing this the rest of my life. Uh, you know, I, I've tried many other things this world has to offer, and it just, it just doesn't cut it. The only, the only thing that I enjoy doing is painting. And, you know, and, and it's not just specifically painting, it's just creating, I guess, more so. I definitely see myself doing this as long as I'm allowed. I mean, you know, it, you know it's to, to such a degree that if I were to lose my arms, I'd probably find a way to paint still. Mm -hmm.